We're now moving closer, and we're going to start swinging into trying to get our arms around the beast of all myeloid neoplasms. And we're, we'll focus on WHO criteria and testing requirements, but not the, the nitty-gritty details of every type of myeloid leukemia and every one of the blood and bone marrow criteria. It, you, you're just going to have to, what I do is just look it up. When you've got a case and you're thinking you're going in a certain direction, look at what the WHO requirements for those are and see if your case m makes it. But don't, you won't have those memorized. On a case-by-case -case basis, you'll be sort of looking for more information. But this next lecture, the key here is getting you into the right category. Um, and we already know that the pathologist's role is ever expanding. When I showed you how hard those post-treatment specimens are, you know that the sort of our rule book has gone way beyond just look at a bone marrow and report how many blasts. Um, we are trying to um, predict outcome, monitor therapy, get the right diagnosis. There's a whole lot going on now in our practice. But fundamentally, there are certain steps we follow, and if you follow them every time and consistently, you're going to move your cases into the right category. And I already talked to you about the ASH CAP guidelines. It's the second, this handout for this lecture that has them, and we'll talk about problems. So here's the rub of how you face these myeloid neoplasms. That if your patient has acute myeloid leukemia, there are fundamentally 25 types, and we haven't even dealt with therapy-related myeloid leukemias, and we haven't dealt with the germline predisposition. So when you th think about it, you have, I was doing the math, you have, you have a very big number in the AML, right? 25 at a minimum, and then we had those therapy-related and germline. Myelodysplasia, nine types. MDS-MPN, the myelodysplastic myeloproliferative, five types. Myelo myeloproliferative, seven types. So it's sort of like that all adds up to 50. There's more than 50. And so if you took every case that came in and said, I have over 50 possible spots this case could go, it will drive you absolutely nuts. So now what we're going to try to focus on in this shorter lecture is get it into the right category. Once you get it into the right broad category, then you have a fighting chance to order the correct molecular genetic tests to kind of tell your clinician what you're thinking about and you know have your dialogue with the clinician about that. And if there is urgent treatment needed, you would get that all rolling. But fundamentally, getting it in 